So it's been a while since I've done any work on this icon generator AI.com project I've been working on. I kind of just been letting it sit there and people have been kind of, you know, buying credits and using it. But there's some things about it that I feel like I could have put more effort in, I could have improved. And one of them is doing the generation with the AI, right? So let me just do a quick one. I'll uh, do like an angry chicken again. That's like my default. We'll do this color here. But I want to show you, let's see, where's Polygon? I got one of these as Polygon. There we go. I want to show you what happens if I were to select and generate like 10 of these images. All right, so we got 10 angry chickens with the Polygon style. These don't look too bad. Um, luckily, this one actually turned out to be better than some of the others. But sometimes you get icons that are just kind of bad, and it's like, eh, I would probably never use this for an actual like icon anywhere. Like, this one looks pretty good. This one looks pretty good. The rest are hit and miss. So at this point, I'm like, what are some other ways I can kind of fine tune the AI generation? Because behind the scenes, I'm using the Dolly API, and there's literally very little you can do to like improve these images. So I've been looking more into using Stable Diffusion, and more specifically, I'm using Replicate.com. This site allows you to basically generate, I guess I should say train models. And I'll show you how to do that um, in this, this video. And then once you've trained the model, you can actually start fine tuning it to like produce the images that you kind of want. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through the code real quick if that's something that you're interested in seeing. So I found this Dream Booth Actions project where basically they have a GitHub action you can use to train a model. And I basically clone this, you know, follow the instructions, I forked this, and then over in the project that I forked, I kind of modified a couple of things here so that I can just simply create a new folder here called data. And I can put like polygon, or I can put these different styles that I have for the icon generator AI.com site. And you'll see here, I have a bunch of like polygon looking images. And these look pretty good. And so my idea was like, if I could take 10 images or 20 images or whatever and train Stable Diffusion to like, know what I mean when I say like generate a cool looking polygon image. So if you look through the train YAML file, there's actually down here, there's a, a section called instance prompt. And this is like a unique string that you want to use to basically allow the stable diffusion model to like know when to kick in with your custom training. So I added some random characters here, WDC, WDC GG polygons. And the class prompt is kind of like, the description of what you're trying to generate, but I think behind the scenes it uses your class prompt to like do some type of fine tuning. I don't know. I don't know how all this works. But the idea is that once you have this YAML file, and once you have a couple of images, for example, I think I have 10, what you can do is you can commit all your code changes to the repo. And then going to the repo itself, you have to go to your settings and you have to basically import a a replicate API key, which is what I did. And once you've done that, you can go and you can run a workflow. So once you click run a workflow, you can type in the name of the model. So in our case, I'll say like web dev Cody slash uh, whatever your model name you want to be. Like web dev Cody and then hello. And then the directory of the data, I just go ahead and put polygon two. It depends on like what different styles I want to generate. I have a lot, as you saw, I have like uh, polygon, pixelated, isometric, watercolored, et cetera. So, so the idea is if I could train a specific model for all of these different styles, I could probably get the icon generator to be more consistent and make better icons. But sometimes Dolly is very hit or miss. Now down here, the number of training steps. Um, from what I've read, you wanna basically take how many images you have in your data set and times it by either 80 or 100. So in our case, uh, we have, 10 images, so you probably want to do 800. The higher this number is, uh, the more accurate your model will get from what they say. But it also means it's going to cost a little bit more money to train these. I think training a model costs around a dollar, give or take, depending on what your number is set. But once you do that, you'll see I trained a model that kicks off some requests to replicate. And once you've done that, you basically go to your dashboard here and you can find your model. So in our case, I think the, the last model I did was this one, the Polygon 80. So if you click this, you can just use it like a normal stable diffusion. You just type in your prompt. In our case, we want the key phrase in style of WDCGG Polygon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say an icon of a dog eating food and then comma, and I'll put my style there. And you can also add some additional prompts here, like 4K, highly detailed, professional, high quality. 
um, <clears throat> trending on art station, stuff like that. Negative prompt, you could say ugly, blurry, bad, low quality. What are some other negative things we don't want in a picture? Uh, I think amateur is one I did. Amateur, because I don't want like amateur artwork. I want like professional artwork. So hopefully with doing all that, um, you can go down here and you can actually start modifying some of these configurations. In our case, I'll keep it 20. Um, you can use DDIM, hey Euler. I don't know which one's the best. You kind of have to play around with it based on your model to figure out which one gives you the best outputs. DDIM does a pretty good job. And then for the guidance scale, the higher you put this, the more it's going to try to like really match your prompt, which can sometimes make your images become less like worse. So I'm just going to keep it at 7.5 and let's just try this out. Let's go ahead and make four of these. So some of the negative things I've seen with replicate.com is that there is a cold start time. So when you first try to generate icons with this model, it can take up to three to five minutes for this model to warm up. So that could be a, kind of a, a deal breaker for my actual SaaS product, because if someone were to try to generate an icon, waiting three minutes or five minutes is not gonna be a very good user experience. But it is what it is. I'm right now I'm just kind of experimenting, see if there's a way I can make icon generation be more consistent. Let's try the same approach while this is doing this in the background. I'm gonna try minimalistic and see what do we get out of that. I'll do 10 more icons here. There you have it. You got 10 more icons. Some of these again, they look they look okay. Like this one, decent. This one over here is decent. This one's decent. Other ones, not so much. Like I probably wouldn't ever use the one that my head's blocking. This one looks kind of whack. Okay, so now that it's actually spun up the underlying infrastructure or container or whatever it does to kind of allow us to predict these images. You can see that it's kind of stepping through the iterations. I set it to do 20 iterations. The higher the iterations you do, the more accurate your image will be. But let's see what we get. So I set an icon of a dog eating food. And here are some of the icons we get back. So they're not too bad either. Like this one looks pretty fresh. I like this one. This one's pretty good too, except for it looks like they made it have two tongues down here or something, I don't know. This one has no eyes. So again, it's another like hit and miss type of thing where none of these AI platforms are like really perfect. Like you have to kind of like make sure you fine tune everything. We can try doing it again. The good thing I like about this replicate is that it's pretty fast, like to generate batches of four images. Like that one just looks like a Picasso dog <laughs> kind of jacked up there. Uh, this one doesn't even look like the the polygon style I'm going for. That one looks okay. This one looks okay. So, yeah, I mean, I guess if you guys do have experience with using Stable Diffusion to replicate, like, let me know what are some approaches I can do to, like, make these images be more consistent and good because if people are going to be paying money for AI-generated stuff, you know, you kind of want it to be good, like, at least half the time but in this scenario i think i got maybe one out of three look good or one out of four like this one's passing but the other ones are like this guy's deformed this guy but nonetheless if you guys are interested in trying to train your own models it's actually a lot easier than i thought it was going to be using this replicate service you basically clone this like i said put some images in you kick off the model you wait 10 to 5, 15 minutes and then you can start using it in the UI like this. Now, if you want to take it to the next level, like let's say you decide that this is working good for your services, you can integrate this with the API. If you go, I'm oh, sorry, if you go to API here, they tell you how to basically run that exact same model by basically running this JavaScript code. So that's super convenient. I love how they provide the code for you that you just basically paste into your Node Express backend or your Next.js backend, and it should just work. All right, well, that's all I got for you guys. If you guys want to join my Discord, I have a link in the description below where you can just kind of hang out and talk about AI or stable diffusion or just coding in general. And like always, be sure to press that like button, bell icon, subscribe, and leave a comment because it helps my channel grow. Have a good day and happy coding.